This episode is brought to you by Pepsi Wild Cherry. Pepsi Wild Cherry is bursting with delicious cherry flavor and a sweet, crisp taste that gives you more to go wild for. Getting wild may look different these days, but whether it's opting for a solo Friday binge watch or a big night out, everyone can indulge in their wild side with Pepsi Wild Cherry, also available in Zero Sugar. So grab a Pepsi Wild Cherry and get wild. Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio, with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms, and we have our own apps for Apple and Android. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to the Daily Red, your lunchtime catch-up on all things Liverpool FC on a Friday before a weekend in which we travel to Manchester to take on Manchester United in the FA Cup quarter-final, a game we will be heavily favoured to win, a game we should win, a game we'll go in confident of winning, but a game that will be difficult because it's Manchester United and there is that rivalry there. Now, there is obviously the possibility that we go there and spank them because, well, we've done that quite a few times in recent years. But it's probably best to prepare yourself for a bit of a slug. They'll play a horrible style of football because that's what they do. They will try and hit us on the counter-attack. They'll try and use the pace of Garnacho on the right and Rashford on the left and Hoysland through the middle, assuming he's back. If he's not back, I'm not really sure what they'll do. I'm not really sure what they'll do. They might play without a striker. When they played City recently, they played without a striker. They played Garnacho and Rashford wide played Bruno as the 9 and McTominay as the 10, but had both of them dropping back into midfield. So they could do that. But either way, we should have far too much quality for them. We're a much better team than them, even with the injuries that we have. We're a much better team than them. Their defence will be a little bit patched together because all of their left-backs are injured. But wan is rumoured to be close to return. So maybe he's right back and Delo is left back. So you get Varane and either Lindelof, Maguire or Evans in the middle. Obviously Onana will be in goal, which should be good news for us. They'll almost certainly start Casemiro and Kobe Menu as a double pivot in midfield. Menu's very promising. Casemiro obviously is Casemiro, but he can't run anymore. I think it's a fair bet that Bruno, Garnacho, and Rashford all start. Barring injury to one of them, which I don't believe any of them are injured. We'll have a check. It's just that final attacking spot. It would be it would be very stupid to bring Rasmus Hoysland back and start him having been out for a number of weeks. Looks like Juan Bissaka is back. They're expecting Maguire back. And they're expecting Hoysland back. But given Hoysland's had a couple of injuries this year and he's so young, it would be a bit dumb if they did start him. But maybe they will. Either way, it shouldn't worry us too much. Now, we'll come into the game off the back of a great win last night. 6-1 to the Reds over Sparta Prague, making it 11-2 on aggregate. Got the job done within the first 14 minutes. Darwin Nunes on seven minutes. Bobby Clark on eight minutes. Mohamed Salah on 10 minutes. And Cody Gakbo on 14 minutes. And it was game over. Now, credit to Sparta. They gifted us two of those goals. But they kept trying to play. They kept trying to play their football. And you know what? I, I, I do 
give them credit for that. As naive as it might be, <clears throat> they knew they were on a hiding to nothing last night anyway. So they might as well come and, and play their football. They did pull one back just before half time. Romancevic scoring on 42 minutes. But then Zabozlai made it 5-1 on 48 minutes. And then Cody Gakbo made it 6-1 on 55. And it felt like we could have scored 7, 8, or even 9. But a couple of things happened. Our players seemed to get obsessed with the idea of getting Cody Gakbo a hat-trick. And seemed obsessed with the idea of finding him in all attacking situations. And he had two good chances. One, I think, was it both from Elliot passes? One was from an Elliot pass anyway. Um, the other was a chance on his left foot. I thought that was from Harvey as well. It might not have been. But either way, he did have a couple of good chances, couldn't take them, and didn't get his hat-trick. But still, 6-1, 11-2 on aggregate. We're taking that all day long. Now... Today, the draw has been made for the quarterfinal and semi-final. And in the quarterfinal, we have drawn Atalanta. So they knocked out Sporting, beating them 3-2 in aggregate. At the moment in Serie A, they sit fifth, sorry, sixth. They are four points outside of the top four. They haven't won in the last four domestic games. They do have some really talented players, and we'll talk more about them when those uh, fixtures get a bit closer. We will play those games on the 11th and 18th of April. So how that works for us is we play Manchester United in the league on the 7th. Then we're, uh, that's away, obviously. Then we're home to Atalanta on the... 11th, then we're home to Crystal Palace on the 14th, and then away to Atalanta on the 18th before Fulham away on the 21st. So I think the the league fixtures actually have done us a favour here. After that, if we get through, we'll take on either Benfica or Marseille. Now, Benfica are currently second in Portugal. But they haven't been particularly good. And in Europe this season, they really haven't been good. So they were in the Champions League to begin with and had a pretty disastrous group stage campaign. Were very fortunate not to finish bottom of their group. They were in with Inter Milan and Real Sociedad, which is a tough enough group, but they lost their first four games. Then they drew with Inter, who'd already qualified. And then they went and beat Salzburg in Salzburg. They beat Toulouse, who obviously we uh, finished ahead of in the group. And then they beat Rangers. And in fairness, going to Ibrox and winning that second leg was pretty impressive. There is talent in that team without question. I think Trubin, the goalkeeper, has a big, big future. Alexander Ba, the right back, is good. Morato, the centre-back, can also play left-back, is good. Antonio Silva is an enormous talent. Absolutely enormous talent at centre-back. In midfield, the big talent is João Neves. But Organ Koku is a, a really good player, one that we were interested in in the summer. They've got João Mario, who's been around for a long time, played for sporting, played for... Inter. So, talent in midfield. You've got David Neres there as well. Up front, you've got... You don't really have a a real out-and-out goal threat as a nine, but they do have Marcus Leonardo, who they've brought in from Brazil. They do have Arthur Cabral, who was, I think, with Basel and went to Fiorentina and didn't work out there, and he's come to Benfica. The two threats, really, are Angel Di Maria and Rafa Silva. That's their two primary goal threats, and those two will largely play in wide midfield area uh, regions. So there is talent there, 
their team will have to respect, but they haven't been particularly good this year. Obviously managed by Roger Smith, Roger Schmidt, rather, who is uh, basically, you know, if you order Jurgen Klopp off, which Roger Schmidt is probably what would turn up. It'd be either him or Ralph Hasenhutl, one or the other. Um, but we'll have to take them seriously if it's them. If it's not them, it'll be Marseille. They're having a bizarre season. They're on manager number three for the year. Uh, Jean-Louis Gasset is there now. He was last in charge of Ivory Coast, was sacked after the group stage of the AFCON, and then Ivory Coast went on to win it without him. In in the league, they have been poor. They're currently seventh. They've been as low as twelfth. Now, they're on a three-game domestic win streak at the moment, but we'll see how that holds up by the time it comes to us. They've got pretty hard fixtures around that time. They've got Lille, then Benfica, then Nice, then Benfica, and that could be tough. And obviously then the semi-final will be later. It would be in May, but they could well be trying to challenge for a European spot, so they might have to focus on the league as well. So this is this has worked out favorably for us. This has worked out favorably for us. We've gotten the, the better side of the draw. We should beat Atalanta and we should beat either Benfica or Marseille. On the other side, you get Milan versus Roma. So one of them is gone. And then you get West Ham Leverkusen. Now you would make Milan and, and Leverkusen the favorites there, but the fact that Roma and West Ham have the home leg second does play into their favour. And if Leverkusen play like they have in their last four games, I think West Ham will beat them. They were very, very poor last night and got very, very fortunate. They went 1-0 down. Then Quarabag had a man sent off. Then Quarabag went 2-0 up. Frimpong got them one back. And they, to, be, to their credit, they did keep going. But they settled into just spamming in crosses. And against good teams, that won't always work. Quarabag are not a good team. They play in an uncompetitive league. That is, what, tier four among European leagues, really? Leverkusen should have been beating them comfortably. Moyes and West Ham will represent a, a tougher task for them. Now, ideally, Leverkusen would go out because you'd rather just not have to play them because they're probably the best team left other than us. So you'd like someone else to just knock them out and make things a little bit easier for us. I do quite like the idea of a Liverpool-Milan final. A little bit of payback for all seven. And it's, I mean, that's that's European royalty in a final. And because of how the Champions League draw has broken out, that Champions League final, just from the names involved, won't be as glamorous, shall we say, as the Europa League final, if it was us versus Rome, or us versus Milan, rather. Just wouldn't be. Poor old Arsenal. Go through Bayern, and they have to go through City or Real Madrid. And then potentially have Atletico Madrid just sitting there ready to shithouse the life out of them in the final. Could be gorgeous. Could be gorgeous. Watching Simeone drain the tears, walk around and physically drain the tears out of Arsenal fans. Um, But for ourselves, this is all working out very, very well. Now, like I said, we will have to add in Europa League semi-finals if we get through at Atalanta. I think they'd be either side of the Villa game. But Villa could also be in the Europa Conference League semi-finals at that point. And here's something else to consider. By the time we face Tottenham and Villa, we may already have, sorry, the, the Premier League may already have secured a fifth Champions League spot. Which means those teams might not have the urgency if they're already assured of one of those five spots. 
So that could work out very favorably for us. But look, the bottom line and what we all know, if you've been on social media, what you will know for a fact is that Arsenal are the best team in the world. If they don't win the league, it's an enormous bottle job and they've gotten the easiest possible draw in the quarterfinals of the Champions League. So let's force all the pressure onto them and we can just be the underdogs, which is what we like. And I will... Just check in then on the main Liverpool sites and see what's going on. Uh, Klopp confirms when three players could return. So Curtis will be back straight after the international break, by the looks of things. Trent and Jota, it's looking like they'll be back for United away in the league. That's massive. That's Jota back a week or two earlier than expected, if it happens. Now, it looks like Ali's are going to be a couple of weeks later than expected. He did also say that Stefan Besetic is currently going through basically a preseason, and the hope is that after the international break, he's able to rejoin team training. So we'll keep an eye on that one. Uh, Ibu Kanate is probably going to miss out against United at the weekend. I wouldn't have wanted to play him anyway, because I'd rather just keep him for, for after the after the break. Um, Virgil van Dijk says he expects a difficult task against United, but did note that they can't just play for a nil-nil this time. Big news, Jaden Dans has signed a new long-term deal with the club, which is very, very good. I'd imagine he probably goes out on loan next season. It will be my guess. Um, Bobby Clark picked up an injury last night. Obviously scored his first goal, which was huge for the kid. Did pick up an injury, looked like maybe some sort of ankle ligament. So hopefully that's nothing too seriously. I say that just because of where he was pointing at uh, as he was explaining the injury to Jürgen. And what else? Oh, Musilewski finally made his debut last night. And Jürgen has explained why he's now ready for Liverpool. So there's all of that on This Is Anfield on Liverpool.com. Hopes and dreams. There's a bit of an Ibu. Europa League. Europa League again. Liverpool thrashing Sparta. Jordan Henderson resp- responds to taunts as Chelsea targets transfer linked with Liverpool. Um, another disaster class last night. It's two wins in 23. Two wins in 23 or 24. Can't help but note that Ajax were in decent form before signing him and are not now. Also can't help but note that Al Etifak, who hadn't won in months with him in the team, have now won three or four without him. But I wouldn't be the type to gloat over these things. Not me. Never. Uh, On AnfieldIndex.com then, there is the piece about Jaden Dan's contract. There's some piece about the Europa League draw. A piece about Jurgen's press conference. There'll be a press conference pod out today as well. A piece about Mo. And then podcast wise, there's the latest Media Matters with Dave Davis and Ben Boxack. There is myself and Carl having a chat about the United game, obviously recorded on Wednesday. So there hasn't been any injuries other than Clark. So we should be good. And then there is post-match Raw from last night, which was Trev, Guy Drinkle, and Harry Setti. So do, I, I think I said it with Jim Boardman yesterday, it was Harry Setti. So do check that out. And from there, we'll have loads of content coming over the weekend. Obviously, there'll be Raw after the game. And yeah, we'll just be plowing forward. Lots of football to come. International break, though. so. I'm not here Monday through Thursday of next week. Um, I need I need to take some time to get my head not ringing and cloudy and whatever else. And I'm going to go see my sister and just chill out for a few days. So I'm going to do that. But I will be back with a vengeance. Filled with vengeance is what I'm going to be. I have no idea why, but I will be. So I'll speak to you all next Friday. Take care of yourselves. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement. 
and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds and it means the world to the people who create these free shows. Sports Social Podcast Network.